Betrayal is a violation. When two people come together, a contract is made. So when the intentional breaking of trust occurs in a relationship, it is an act of emotional abuse. It can leave a victim with PTSD, trauma, and many other emotional and mental health side effects. So let's talk about some of the everyday acts of betrayal. A husband cheats on a wife, a friend shares a private secret, a narcissist might discard or ghost or abandon a relationship. An institution can refuse to take action against a crime. And one of the things that you can think about is the U.S. Uh, the U.S. Uh, gymnastics abuse scandal that happened a few years back. So the toxic effects of betrayal, betrayal can literally shatter somebody else's self-esteem. It can leave them fragmented and it can deeply impact the emotional psychological damage for years if it goes untreated. So let's learn from source as I am a psychic medium and some of the lessons that I've been learning from TikTok about how to recover from betrayal trauma. So if you are new here, my name is Kamala Hurley, super excited for all of you guys to be here. I have to say I'm not alone. I got friends here live on TikTok who are definitely uh, watching me record this podcast live. And um, I just want to just say that this last week, so many of my private clients, as well as clients that I've been helping live on TikTok or live within my Facebook group have been coming to me talking about their betrayal. And I want people to acknowledge there is a specific um, area within psychology, which is called betrayal trauma. And like I do for every podcast that I start, it doesn't matter what day, uh, what day it is when you discover this uh, podcast, I always will do a tarot reading just to talk about collective energy. And this is over like the theme of how to get over betrayal. So I'm going to move my microphone a little bit. Uh, this, po this podcast is 100% not perfect. Uh, it is, uh, it is <laughs> not perfect. Um, so I just want to just say, I appreciate it. Um, so let's get into it. Let's start pulling cards and let's start like tearing apart. Um, wow. It's amazing. The first card out is the nine of pentacles reverse nine of pentacles. When in the upright position, nine of Pen pentacles, when it's in the upright position is about somebody who is proud of themselves. It's somebody who has, uh, felt accomplishment. And here we are talking about betrayal and, um, the aftermath of betrayal and the way that it can deeply impact an individual's life. And we have the card come out reverse. It just blows my mind. The harmony of the universe, the harmony of tarot to help provide clarification on what the emotions are that are involved with betrayal. So nine of pentacles is like feeling crushed. It's feeling like no matter what I put out there, uh, I, I, I wasn't received and, um, betrayal is like some pretty heavy emotions. If you haven't listened to my last podcast on ghosting, check it out because I think that the, the ghosting, uh, podcast about ghosts and ghosting is very much connected to this betrayal podcast. Okay. And so the nine of pentacles came out. Let's go to the next, um, wow. The next one came out. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my gosh, this is insane. Okay. So the next piece that comes out when doing a reading. So I, I assume if you're going to listen to this podcast on how to get over betrayal, you probably are experiencing this in your life. And this is a reading that you need to hear. Okay. I'm acknowledging the fact that perhaps right now you are overcome with emotions and you're not trusting yourself. Okay. I literally like, like one of the commenters on TikTok live right now is saying, you literally can't make this up. So I have the nine of pentacles reversed. And when you're dealing with betrayal, what is it that you get? Justice literally reversed. This is an injustice. It is injustice when uh, someone decides to cheat on you, when somebody decides to share a public secret, when somebody decides to just discard you or abandon you, um, or an institution that doesn't take positive action to defend a victim. These are ways in which injustices show up here. And this is the way that injustice shows up. 
So I want you to understand if you're suffering from betrayal, I want you to understand that betrayal is literally an injustice towards you. And we're going to talk about how to process through that emotion. Okay. I'm going to talk about it in a way that I haven't talked about in the other two podcasts that I shared, because I'm actually going to dig in and get vulnerable. And I'm going to talk about how I've been dealing with this in my own life. Okay. Just so that you know that we're in this together, right? Um, let me keep going. Let's see what the next card is that I have to pull out uh, regarding a tarot reading and how to deal with um, yeah, and how to deal with betrayal. The next card out is the six of cups reversed. And for me, six of cups reversed oftentimes indicates an individual is literally stuck in the past. OK, you're stuck in the past. It, you it. it it, you're too nostalgic. You're thinking things that um, are, are literally better than they are. Now, this six of cups, this card that comes out right now, specifically, okay, in the 90s, the psychologists who are doing research at Stanford and the University of Oregon came together and discovered within betrayal trauma there is a facet called betrayal blindness. So oftentimes people who are being betrayed don't realize or won't acknowledge the betrayal. I would imagine that uh, this could be true with, let's say an individual that's married and finds out that their partner who is the primary like income earner in the relationship is having an affair with somebody and they don't have the the financial means to leave that relationship, betrayal blindness becomes a coping mechanism for that individual to make it through uh, the set of circumstances that's on their plate. I've seen this time and time again by clients refusing to acknowledge the truth of the circumstance. And that is one of the toughest pieces. I mean, getting into acceptance about betrayal or any type of grief that you're experiencing, that is literally, it's part of the way that the human mind, uh, part of the way that the human mind copes, right? I know that I pulled up an article Okay, written by wholewellnesstherapy.com talking about the brain and how trauma impacts, you know, the brain. And they say that whenever trauma impacts the brain, it, it, it impacts, you know, there's the prefrontal, prefrontal cortex, the amygdala, and then the hippocampus. Okay. And <laughs> like, I, I just like to say that, you know, I pronounce things so good. Um, so <laughs> But the amygdala is the emotional and survival center. And when you get into betrayal, particularly if you're being betrayed by a partner who's the primary income provider, your emotional survival center goes into overdrive. Okay. It's almost, it's like a way of being able, it is the full mouth. People are letting me know in the comments of TikTok. When you get into that emotional survival of a betrayal, you will become blind to the truth. So particularly if you're here and you're hanging out with me, I just want you to know there's nothing wrong with reaching out and getting um, you know, a medical professional to help support you through trauma of any kind. I'm a big advocate of therapy. I'm a big advocate of working with like coaches. I'm a big advocate of working with medical professionals to support you in your path of healing. So you're not alone, I think is an important piece that I just want to say right here. <laughs> and, um, and that there is something where, you know, when you learn of the betrayal, I can think of like, just even growing up as a kid and, uh, having like friends in high school be like, well, you know, my dad cheated on my mom. We don't really talk about it, but he's still seeing her. And it's like, it's literally like a type of blindness that can happen to not just one individual, but it can actually happen to the entire family. And it sets up for, I mean, just layers upon layers of, um, of healing that needs to happen. And you can start to understand how this type of trauma, if left unprocessed, can start to impact family members, not just your life, but family members, and can eventually turn into a type of ancestral trauma that's passed forward. And that's why I want to encourage you to just step into the faith that you have a spiritual team, okay, of ascended masters, spirit guides, loved ones, 
the highest source, infinite intelligence, universal heart, whatever word, God, whatever word you want to use that, that this, there is a spiritual realm that is working to try and heal the toxic effects of betrayal within your life, but it's co-creating you 100% need to remind yourself that you have to show up in order for the universe to show up. I mean, I have yet to seen a unicorn. I love the energy of unicorns. Like, don't get me wrong, but like the healing on something like a betrayal is not going to start until you take the first step. So if you need to take the first step with like a medical professional, do that. If you're, if the first step is like, um, getting a journal, then you need to do that. But I just want you to understand that there are, there is a deep impact that occurs with betrayal. So let me get back to pulling out a couple other cards, um, that came out. This one came out in the middle, which is interesting. So this is the emperor. And I, I'm going to say that I think that this card definitely resonates with exactly what I'm saying. The emperor can be somebody who is very authoritative, somebody who is uh, a, a leader. This could be, you know, the medical professional to help you make that transition out of the betrayal. And uh, so I it just, there it is. The cards are like literally just supporting me again. I don't even know what's going to come next. I'm going to pull out two more cards and then we're going to drop into this. Okay. Page of Pentacles. I like that. That's definitely one way in which I have been dealing with my own type of, um, what's this? Oh, Ace of Cups. This is so beautiful. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to read this right now. Ooh. Okay. All right. <laughs> this is so good. Oh my God. It's so good. Okay. All right. So this is beautiful. So I just want you, I, I know that I've shared with you guys some pretty like intimate stuff, like on TikTok, And I have shared with people that I have, um, experienced a, like a, a sexual assault back in August. And I will tell you that immediately coming out of, um, that experience, uh, I, ended up getting involved with an energy healer and a life coach. And I ended up having a deeply intimate, uh, connection with this man for seven months. It's, I feel like it's just like one of the deepest, like, uh, types of, uh, relationships that I've probably had a lot of healing happen. Unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, what happened at the end of this relationship is for whatever reason, okay. Um, even though he made promises to me, cause he, he knew about like the experiences that I went through, the traumas that I experienced, uh, he ended up ghosting me and I don't have a specific answer on why he chose to leave our relationship. Uh, I just know that I've particularly have had to deal with ghosts and I feel betrayed because we had a contract, of, of friendship that was deeply important to me. And I wouldn't have opened up and has been as, um, as vulnerable with this individual if I had ever anticipated experiencing betrayal. So, so that sucks. I'll just tell you, if you're here and you're like, oh my God, <laughs> This sounds like it sucks. This sounds like my life where it's like, you know, you get your butt kicked in one direction and then like you're getting kicked yet again after that. But I want you to understand and thank you for friends on TikTok who are saying thank you for sharing. I just want to talk about my own journey of healing because one of the things that I have to share with people is that the healer needs the most healing. And I have certainly had my share of traumas from like domestic abuse, sexual assault, I have been uh, in relationships with narcissists. Uh, I do see that this relationship that I had here has been, okay, because I, I did connect to like, you know, my spirit guides. Uh, for whatever reason, I cannot directly, I don't really, okay, my loved ones only come through when in dreams. And it's only for specific things that are really important. Okay. Like helping me understand like a car accident and why that happened in my life. I am not able to like directly go into mediumship and be like, Hey nanny, what's up? Which is my grandmother. It just doesn't happen. Right. And thank you for all of the support, um, that everybody's giving to me on TikTok. You guys rock. I love you. See lessons from TikTok. I'm telling you, I learned so much by being here, by helping you guys, but also by 
taking action on the things that like my, my spirit guides and the council have, uh, have shown to me. And one of the very first things that I started to do in order to heal from this, um, from this type of abandonment, which was a betrayal of our friendship. And uh, the only thing that I was able to get from this other individual, oh, Oh my God, my headphones are going dead. (laughs) The only other thing that I was able to get from this individual was confirmation that he, he agreed that he, uh, betrayed me and, um, and that he broke trust with me and that's it. That's the only thing that I, I was able to understand was that he did those things to me. And then I don't know why I will, I'll probably never know why. So what do you do when somebody betrays you? Uh, I'm really lucky that I do have, uh, like an emotional support team. So opening up to, uh, friends and family about the experience was really important. Yeah. And the second thing I just want to say, which is the hardest piece. Okay. To put into healing is this, this piece right here, which is in order to heal, we have to feel. And it's really scary to wake up and like immediately be in tears over the loss of a friendship, a deep connected friendship that I had experienced for you know, se- the last seven months. I, I, this individual knew everything about me, everything. And to have them just suddenly uh, abandon our friendship was a deep betrayal and triggered an investigation by my soul into the meaning of betrayal. And so not only did I a start by connecting to friends and family, I, you know, and sharing with them intimately about what I was going through. Um, the second thing that I did was that I gave myself permission to feel, and I gave permission to grieve And this grieving process of betrayal, I believe is very similar. My spiritual team asked me to be vulnerable and to share this experience, even right now in this podcast. Uh, The third thing that I started to do uh, was I allowed myself time to deal with the betrayal and to deal with like the loss of the relationship This is somebody I would do like four hour calls with every day. This is somebody who would message me from the moment I woke up to like the moment I was going to sleep. This person, like, you know, like it was nonstop communication. So to go from like a hundred percent to like zero was like, uh, it literally felt like I was dealing with uh, a death and it was, I know it's not easy. I want you to know it's sad. It's not easy. I cried. I allowed myself to get perspective that I know that the grieving of this will not last forever. I won't allow it. I definitely won't allow it. I see people here are saying right now, I can absolutely relate from my last experience, what that felt like. Thank you so much for sharing that on TikTok. I, so many people are saying it's hurtful. Wow. I'm so sorry. I see, you know, the tear, sad, emo. Uh, you know, emoticon, we've got the stages of grief, baby. Absolutely. And shock and disbelief was the first stage that I went through. I I literally couldn't believe it. Like, you know, it's like you flinch to go to grab your phone because you're going to message somebody and you're like, oh, wait, this relationship's over. Uh, uh, Shock, shock and denial. It, It was the start of feeling. It was the start of healing was the shock and denial. It is also humiliating. Absolutely. I, <laughs> I like to consider myself kind of fabulous and I actually really love to support and, um, and help the people that are part of my inner circle to rise up, but one step at a time. Absolutely. I just, you know, I think that I think it took a couple of weeks. I mean, like it it at least took a couple of weeks to recover from the, the shock and the disappointment. And then after that, guys, I will definitely tell you rage and anger and boom, let me tell you what I started to research. Let me tell you. Okay. Cause I know a lot of people get stuck in the next stage. I'm getting ready to talk to you about. Okay. And the next stage is revenge, anger. Technically it's anger, but 
a lot of people want to get into that revenge. You know, you start plotting the ways you're like, you made me feel like this. I'm going to show you, I'm going to do this right back to you. Okay. <laughs> uh, and so the beautiful thing is, is that I was like, I, I hear the angry thoughts. I will allow them to rise up. I will sit with the angry thoughts. A hundred percent won't take action on it though. A hundred percent. I'm not taking action on this. Okay. I, I, I am allowing these sort of like negative entities of negative thoughts, right? Which are thoughts from the lower realms. And I was like, I was like, this, this is not an energy I'm going to allow to come into me. So this is where having a spiritual life is so important. When you start to see that some thoughts help you rise up, and those are thoughts that are being sent to you from your spiritual team on the other side, these are, you know, these, are, this is energy from like eighth dimension and above. When you start to realize that the thoughts that lead you to doing something that is positive and healing is a way to rise out of the negative emotion, that is what you need to listen to. Do not get sucked in by the negative demon like energy that wants you to step into the energy of revenge. And let me tell you, you don't want to, you don't, don't believe me about this. Watch what's going on with Johnny Depp and Amber Harrow heard. Okay. They have a $50 million defamation like lawsuit that is going on right now. You can watch it live on YouTube. And it's horrific, the stuff that is coming out of that relationship. Two individuals seeking revenge. Bah, 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 bah. It's, like, it's like a tennis match, except for nobody's winning anything going back and forth in this match. Nobody's going to win anything. Nobody's winning. Everybody's losing. Uh, like I, I think it's even sort of damaging to the collective for everybody to have to witness how bad they fought each other. Some people really aren't meant to be together. Yeah, BC's mad. Somebody's knocking at the door. Well, they can go and take a hike. <laughs> so anger, anger, don't get stuck in revenge. There's, you know, and a lot of my clients too talk about the revenge that they want to do, like on a husband that cheats. Like, you know what? I'll show, I'll show him. I'll show him, you know? And it, it's like, why get stuck in that energy? All that does. Okay. The other thing too. Okay. This is something that like my spirit guides and the council brought to me, which is you don't want to take action steps of revenge and energetically ties you to that person in a very negative way. So take a breath when you feel that anger. And when you start to feel that you feel the desire for revenge, it's nothing to win from that. It's just going to keep you in the shizzle and the lower energy and the negative realms for longer than necessary. The next piece, the third piece that I started to experience when dealing with uh, betrayal is uh, bargaining. It was like, oh, well, maybe if I had done this, okay, maybe uh, there would have been a different outcome. Right. So you can kind of think like, you know, let, let's say if you're a wife and you have like a husband that cheated on you, or you had like a wife that cheated on you or whatever, you had a partner that cheated on you and, uh, and you decide like, well, what if I had made their lunch every day, <laughs> they wouldn't have gone out for lunch with that person that they ended up having an affair with. Okay. I know that's really silly, but I'm just keeping it in perspective. Okay. You can't bargain your way out. You never did anything wrong. In fact, a betrayal speaks more about the other person than it does about you is something to keep in perspective. That act, especially when we talk about like, you know, a friend that shares a, a, a private secret and just makes it public, particularly if we're talking about like narcissists that just discard you for no reason and just abandon the relationship. Uh, it's easy to want to bargain and think, well, maybe if I just gave more of myself, things would be better. So there's just, you know, the bargaining stage is kind of short, but it is part of the healing process. And then the, the fourth stage that I started to experience was sadness. This is like back to like the, this is like, you know, you got to shed some tears. Okay. You got to let that emotion out. Oftentimes, um, nothing's better than, uh, being able to let those tears go. 
allowing yourself to, to grieve and cry and say, I accept, you know, like, is this, is, this is the closest step to acceptance. Okay. When you finally make it to the sad phase where you're just depressed and you're like, holy shit, this person's out of my life. You're like, you're starting to get an idea that you're going to have to rebuild your life with better relationships. And so, um, Again, I, you know, like I, sometimes I, I would just, you know, I would be like, okay, I'm going to go do this and that. And then I'd be like, nope, I'm actually going to cry. <laughs> so I would, I let myself cry. I cry while driving. Right. But you know, like, like I'd be driving the car and I'd be like, woo. And then by the time I got to my destination, I like wiped my face off. And I was like, that's what I needed. It's okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to grieve and to let that energy of betrayal go. And finally, the fifth piece is, is getting into a place of acceptance, just accepting that for whatever reason, that relationship is over and the betrayal happened. And the beautiful thing is, is that once you can get into acceptance of the experience that you had, you are able to, you're, it's like you're literally standing at the edge of an ocean and you see a vast horizon in front of you and maybe you see distant lands and you're optimistic and hopeful. Now, I didn't read the rest of this tarot reading for specific reason. I'm supposed to drop this in right now. I will tell you that one of the cards that I pulled out in regards to this reading, which is getting into acceptance is seeing that when we accept the betrayal and we we see it as an opportunity. It's an opportunity to gain wisdom for myself. It was an opportunity to do a deeper soul dive into abandonment issues and to heal in a deeper way from abandonment issues. I'm not sure that anybody could really hurt me the way that, again, I don't feel like I, there's somebody in my life. I mean, knock on wood. Okay. That doesn't happen again. But I really learned a lot about how to love myself in a deeper way. Yeah, I, I, I was able to sort through and see that I have options. I can choose to, you know, to, to look at, turn my back on the negative thoughts, the negative energy, and instead I rise up. You see how this, the, the staff is lifted up and I hold the world and I choose a more harmonious future. I choose a future that is entirely co-created between myself and the universe. I know that this experience that I went through cultivated a beautiful sense of wisdom so that I, I can be emotionally prepared in some sense. If this were to happen to me again, I know that I would survive it. Yeah. So it's so beautiful too, how tarot is an opportunity for us to be able to have our inner life, our spiritual life connected to the tarot. So I just, it just blows my way, my mind, that card came out. I am definitely personally in that nine of wands energy, which is recovering. I just got hit over the head by a staff, this experience. Okay. I need time to like rest and recover. I'm leaning on a pole, even though I know I have beautiful options happening in my life. I know that I'm healing. I see that the end of this burden is just in sight. It's just being patient and getting back to knowing I have all these beautiful options in front of me and I will reclaim my passion. Not only that, like the ace of swords, which is about having a breakthrough. And that's what happens when you get into acceptance. You're literally experiencing a breakthrough. This is a mental breakthrough. You have the capacity, just like I have the capacity to not allow the trauma of betrayal to go on by choosing to step into the path of healing. And some layers of betrayal are so heavy and dark and deep that you really do need the medical professional help. You know, this is all about you measuring, uh, how much time was involved and what type of, um, incidents were involved in, in terms of the type of support that you need. Right. I mean, this was only seven months, you know, there's some people who are betrayed after having a relationship for seven years, people who are married for 20 years and then found out that, and this is, this is a true story here. 
found out that like, um, their, their husband of 20 years had a completely separate family with a woman that he had cheated on. Okay. For years. Right. This is like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Maria, right. Schwarzenegger and Maria finds out that he had been banging the nanny and that he actually had a child bought a house for the nanny you know, that kind of got swept underneath the, 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 the rug quite a bit. And, you know, is the reality is, is that Arnold's the daddy to two families. Okay. And I know that Maria had to go through some heavy, I mean, she's a, imagine being public, you know, and having everybody want to take pictures of you while this is happening. She's had a breakthrough. She's gone to, on to lead a very, um, amazing, you know, a life, uh, uh, serving other communities that are in disadvantage. The next card that came out and the final card, I'm just going to end this tarot reading and this podcast on is this, and this is where guys, this is where tarot and using the, the spiritual intuitive, like listening to your intuition and, and getting good with divination tools like tarot or, or pendulum or dowsing rods, or, uh, you know, getting into a deep, like channel session where you connect to your spirit guides provides so much clarity. I do this like, like at least three times a week where I go into a deep channeled connection to my spiritual team. Okay. Minus the loved ones, right? <laughs> what happens at the end of, of healing from betrayal? I mean, it's literally ace of cups, ace of cups, ace of cups, ace of cups. I cannot make this up. I literally can't make this up. This is about bringing in fresh new love. So even if even Maria has the capacity after having discovered that Arnold Schwarzenegger had had, you know, an affair and, and had children with another woman, she has the capacity to say yes to love if she chooses it. I, right here, I have the capacity to look at the rest of my life and say, I say yes to love. I'm going to allow that love to come in. I'm going to allow the healing energy of love to come into my life. And let this be confirmation that you are indeed in a process of, of transmuting negative energy into gold. Okay. You are literally taking the fertilizer of a garden, you know, which is AKA shit. Okay. And you are going to use that all around you to allow the rose that you are to bloom up. Okay. <laughs> You are indeed in a process of overcoming betrayal. You are capable of this. So remain in faith. This, this podcast, you know, this is like, like I'm literally, what are we 40 minutes in? Okay. 40 minutes in. Yes, it is. It is indeed earth day. So, uh, you know, getting out into nature is a beautiful way to help help heal and repair yourself forest bathing, hikes in nature, sitting by a lake, uh, listening to a water fountain. Um, I, I do like all natural, uh, facials count as being connected to nature. I don't know. That's up to you. But when we honor ourselves, when we, when we realize that the people who betrayed us have way worse issues to deal with, because they're not even aware of like, I mean, anybody with common respect and love would never treat you this way. There is an opportunity to grow. There is an opportunity to realize that all around you is uh, the opportunity to take the fertilizer and allow it to be the material that will allow you to expand and understand that being compassionate and forgiving them and accepting it is what you went through. It's just, it just brings nothing but opportunity. It is what will page of pentacles help to transform your physical reality. I know that it sucked going through that experience. It took me like a month and a half to go through it until I was finally able to like, even be on this podcast to be able to, uh, share it with you. But if you need that type of deep healing, it's all around you. 
I know that particularly for myself, I like to uh, sit in the steam room at the gym and get into meditation and open up in the deepest way possible to my uh, spirit guides and to do energetic balances, balancing of my chakras. I also am a big believer in Reiki. You guys know that I'm a Reiki master and that Reiki has just provided another next level way to accelerate my healing process because there is a universal life force and there's a universal life force of, of love all around you that you can tap into. So get personal with this, tap into what does a spiritual life mean to you? How do you bring spiritual intuition into your healing process? How is it that you're able to, um, find the path forward for healing? This is something that's like absolutely, um, specific to you. And I, uh, I just have to say, thank you so much for uh, letting me share and get vulnerable with you guys. I plan on doing that a bit more and offering insight to hopefully help just one other person out there. Maybe this is you, and maybe this is what you needed today. I will tell you this week, I had five people who left reviews on my podcast and I am super excited to say I'm going to let people off TikTok pick a number between one and five and whoever, whatever number gets the most on there. So guys on TikTok, okay, we're, we're doing this live right now. Five, pick a number between one and five and put it in the comments. Dominic says four. Okay. Let's see who else we got going on. We got two from Mel, uh, three, two, uh, let's see here. Three. Okay. Three and two keep going guys. Three. Okay. Three. Okay. It looks like number three is winning. Okay. Number three is winning. So what I'm going to do is I, okay. Three. Okay. Three is the winner. Three is the winner. So what I'm going to do is I am going to count left to right in the comments received off of the back end of, uh, the Apple podcast analytics to reveal right now live who gets a free one-on-one -on -one session with me. So I'm just logging in. Let me just put my password in. I'm super excited about this. <laughs> let's see here. Apple is always so tight about logging into anything Apple. So I got to put that, um, verification code in. So let me just go ahead and type that in bump, bump, bump. And let's see number three, it's going to be number three. I'm opening up the uh, ratings and reviews. I'm so excited. Let's just figure this out. I know I will find you. Oh, all right, here we go. So the official winner is, uh, Lisa MCC. Liza, L-E-I-S. I think you're actually live on my comments right now. It's lessons from TikTok. And it says, TikTok, you don't stop, especially Kamala. So I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, you are live. Woohoo! I'm super excited. You just won a live one-on-one -on -one session with me. I will send you a message. I'm going to send you an email. I'm super excited. She's live right now to know that she got this reading. Uh, I'm super excited to connect with you. You won a mediumship tarot, perhaps even Reiki. You know, when I go into a private session, we go deep. I am just so excited. So I want you guys to know that the people who didn't win, you guys are entered into the contest next week. Okay. I know I'm so excited. Yeah. Let's do this girl. So anybody else that for the next week between Friday until next Friday, you have the opportunity to rate and review this podcast and I will select one person from all the comments. Okay. To win a free one-on-one -on -one session with me. I can't believe it either. Friday's popping. That's what I'm saying. Love popping's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> so excited. I'm so excited that I'm able to share this journey with you guys. Uh, so if you, um, if you don't know already, my name is Kamala Hurley. I am a, a, a psychic medium. I, um, I'm also an integrative health coach and, uh, the foundation of health and wellness is so important to me. Friday night is when this podcast goes out into the world. Friday nights on TikTok is when I'm live and I do true crime. I help to solve homicides, missing person cases, and questionable deaths through my gifts of mediumship. This is the way that I give back. If you're interested in it, check it out. Uh, thank you so much, guys. I am out of here uh, sending you so much light and love. And I just want you to know, dealing with betrayal, dealing with abandonment, just dealing with life in general. 
you have the courage and the bravery to keep walking forward with a brave heart. So I will see you in my very next podcast. Uh, you're probably watching on YouTube or you're listening. You're like, wait, I can't see you, but you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. I love you guys. I will see you in the next podcast. And again, congratulations. Cheers. Bye guys.